Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, this is the day that the Lord has made that we should rejoice and be glad in it. I salute all the men of God that are seated in the house, particularly all the teams that uh, came with me uh, to this program tonight uh, from South America, from Europe here, and uh, in Nigeria. I want to bless God for your life and they appreciate you and pray that as you have come to honor God in my life and in this program, the Lord will honor you more. I salute once again my friend uh, who is the convener of this program that will be coming together for uh, over three decades now uh, on this journey. Uh, I want to salute you. That's uh, Apostle Wali Adetuberu. We were both in the teaching service together uh, uh, for some years before we bow out uh, in, in, in Oyo State and into higher calling of the work of the kingdom. I salute you for this assignment. We had discussed it, but we didn't know that this was the way it's going to come out. Um, then it's, it's awesome that God initiated it or birthed it this way. I thank God for other women of God on the platform that I may not recognize in person, uh, apart from Dr. George, uh, Kemi George. I salute you. Who is going to uh, wrap it up tonight? I don't envy your assignment tonight, <laughs> but I know grace is there for you uh, to to put everything together, pull it together from Friday, Saturday, and today, Sunday, uh, that we're rounding off everything. Of course, uh, to make this possible, uh, you have what you call the grand staff. Without the grand staff, uh, it cannot be possible. Uh, that is in the person of uh, uh, our sister, Apostle Eose, uh, who has been anchoring this work tremendously, pulling Nigeria and other places together to ensure that we have a very wonderful broadcast. Thank you to all your crew as well that I may not know, but uh, that is known to you. And uh, of course, Dr. Ariola Araba. Thank you so, so much. That name is Thick, okay? And um, for those who are from my roots, we understand that is not a mean name uh, by no means. And then I pray that in the kingdom of God, you will never be mean. You will always be in the area where you'll be relevant in the kingdom assignment. Um, having observed all those things, all other protocols observed, uh, I go back to the subject uh, within 15 minutes given to me or less. Uh, back to the roots, and then we laid the foundation on Friday, uh, talking about the fact that we need to examine our foundation. When you say back to the root, it means you are doing something before, and you have deviated, you have slighted off, just like at a tangent. When you miss it at a tangent, and you don't, you know, uh, quickly redress it, then you begin to taper off uh, until you fade out of it completely. And that is why God is calling our attention to it, just like, you know, Elisha said, uh, Elijah said to Elisha when he was about to call him, he said, go back again. There is the need for us to go back again. There's the need for us to do a revisitation of things that we were doing and that we had deviated from. And in other words, let's go back to order, the place of order. And then the reference that I want to use tonight is the case in 1 Samuel, in the, in the return, when uh, David was going to return the ark back to Hebron, the seat of David, okay? And they did it in a modern way. 
what was the modern way? Put it on the cart. Put the ark on the cart, driving it, deviating from the pattern because I told us on Friday that we need to do things according to pattern. And they deviated and Uza touched the cart because there was a kind of rocking, maybe the, the cart, uh, the, the, the horse that was pulling the cart hit a stone and there was a shaking and Uza touched the ark and God killed him because it was out of order. And so there was a stop in the process or in the proceeding. The ark had to rest in the house of Obed-Edom for six months. And when David heard that God is blessing the house of Obed-Edom, he had to go back. What was his going back? To search the scriptures, to see how the ark should be carried, which was one of the things that God gave to Moses, that it is the priest that should carry the ark with staves on their shoulder. And that was why he said the government will be upon his shoulder. And so when he realized that, he had to revert the way he was doing it. Removing the ark from the cut to the shoulder of the priest, four priests, two on this side, two on that side, and that is why there is a kind of um, um, dichotomy about the fivefold ministry office. Some say it is five, some say it is four. Whichever way we have the ascension gifts. And so they carried it in the proper way and God released his glory. This is what we are talking about. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. That is the order. And you don't call yourself into it. You are called. You don't assume it. The Bible said, Hebrews chapter 5, it said, no man take this honor upon himself, save the one that is called, like Aaron. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 4, no man take this honor upon himself, save the one that is called. So when we are saying back to the roots, we are saying back to order. We have been out of order. And that is why there is disorderliness. And that is why there is a mess into our messages. That is why there is a lot of noise in our voice. And so the, the noise has drowned our voice that we become voiceless and people are not hearing what we are saying again. So there is so much confusion. And I love what Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. He said, everything must be done decently and in order. And if you look at the, the, the flag of Brazil, what, the, what you find there is order and service, not service and order. No. Many people have put service before order. It won't work. That's why we have a lot of confusion in the house today. There is order. And we need to go back to that. Order in bringing people into ministry. Order in discipling them. Order in ordination. Order in finances, in the economy of the kingdom. There is order. 
There are so many things that we are doing, even in the financial area, in the economy of the kingdom today, that is out of order, that is complete witchcraft. And I have no apology for that. There is a way to do it, and you will know this is God, that you don't need to coerce people into giving. We use gimmicks for giving. I never found that in the scripture. And that's manipulation. That is an aspect of witchcraft. One of the manifestation of witchcraft is manipulation. Indoctrination. Intimidation. You intimidate people to give. You said if you don't tight, you will tight. Where is that in the scripture? Excuse me. That is why we need to go back. How was it done in the Old Testament? And how is it done in the New Testament? How can we get results? That is what we are talking about. And if we realize that we have missed it, Isaiah chapter 5, he said, the leaders of these people have caused them to err. The fault is not in the young ones coming up. The fault is with those who are ahead. So how can we correct it? Because we said we must repent. It means look into what you are doing and take a 360 degree turn around. And we find some leaders, I will not mention name, that I hold in high esteem, have passed through them, that they have come to their congregation and they have said, I have preached this in time past. It was error. I am sorry. That is the way of humility. And to correct what you are doing. One of them was invited to a meeting and everybody expressed their anger about what he was doing. I was humbled. And that is why I will always follow him. He said, because I have done this to the body of Christ, I am sorry. How many people can go back to their congregation and say, I am sorry? How many people can go back to their family? Because the, the church starts from the family. And say, my wife, I am sorry. I've missed it. Children, I am sorry. I've missed it. I sang to us the, book, the song of revolt. I said, let's begin again. We have not come with the rod upon anybody here. No. This meeting is not to judge anybody. If there is anything, it is to look at myself. Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. This was one of the, the, the scriptures that, you know, <laughs> scatter us some few weeks ago when we were treating a subject. Just search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thought and see if there is any wicked way in me. If you read it from message translation, uh, uh, yeah, from message translation, <laughs> that one just scatter it. And I said, Lord, have, have mercy on me. If you were to extray my mind at this moment, if you will judge who can stand. And that is why we're saying, let's go back to the basics. Let's go back to the Bible. Let's go back to how it was done. One of the leaders in the U.S., when he was sentenced to prison many years ago, I won't mention his name. That was when he began to read the Bible all over again. And he began to discover things, particularly the red letter book. And I want to encourage all the leaders in the house today, take utmost importance to the red letter of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
and address it. This is the word that comes from the master, not any other person. Particularly the kingdom teaching, the attitude that you should have in the kingdom. Sister Ayose, please give me a note when it is my time. I believe uh, I should be rounding off now. Two minutes, Master. Thank you very much. You see, um, he began to read the red letter and he saw where he had goofed. And at the end, by the time he came out of the prison, he came out with a book and he said, I was wrong. I have that book in my library. Our late evangelist, Billy Graham, had to go and visit him in prison. No, sir, you have five minutes, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, thank you. You are being generous. And he said, Why are you coming to visit me in prison, Billy? He said, I can't leave you. You are my brother. How many people have we wounded and killed and sliced and buried when they are alive? He who must come to the um, to equity must come with a clean hand. He who does not have a, have, a, have a sin, let him cast the first stone. But that does not mean that we should tolerate sin. We should go back to the book. How was it done in the Old Testament, in the New Testament? You know, when at the contest of Baal, in 1 Kings chapter 18, Elijah called the people because they were in a, in, in, in a backsliding state. And when we say, let's go back, what we are saying is that we are backsliding. Let's go back. Quickly, he said, why are you two between two opinions? If it is God, serve him. And if it is Baal, serve him. But this is going to be the contest. The God and all the priests of Baal, they come from morning till evening. He waited strategically until evening. And when it was evening time, what did he do? He set the stones in order. We are the living stones that must be set in order, ladies and gentlemen. And after that, he put the sacrifice on it. Then poured water. And then he called on the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he said, prove to these people that you have called me. And the fire came down. Not by Abradacabra, but in order. Because we cannot do things in order today. We are running after the witches and wizards and doing all kinds of horrible things. That was not the way it was given to us. It was not the way the gospel was handed over to us. And for those of us who still know what the scripture says, he said, content earnestly for the faith that was once handed over. That is, I believe that is the essence of this. And as I finish, in Revelation chapter 2, the owner of the church said this. One second, please. Glory to Jesus. When he was speaking to one of the churches, Revelation 2, verse 5. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and I will remove thy candlestick out of thy place except thou repent. Back to the root. Let's repent and let's come back. Let's swallow our pride. And let the Lord of the church have his way. I pray the Lord will help us as we go on in this meeting. This is my submission. Thank you very much. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise. Apostle, over to you, sir. 
Thank praise you. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Reverend Victor, the Lord bless you. The Lord lift you. That is powerful. That is wonderful. I can see exactly what you are putting into us. Order. God is not a God of confusion. He's a God of order and decency. He's an author of order and decency. Decency has flown off the church this day. We have brought confusion to the matter. That is why many things are no more respecting the spirit of God in the church anymore. But we thank God very much for what we heard. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, many of us that are hearing right now, we are setting our heart back so that when we leave this conference, we will go and set things right. And as many as are all around,